Hey guys, how's it going? Before we actually get into the video, this is actually what we're going to be building. Um, this is a very simple to-do list application. Um, for example, if I want to add a task over here, um, finish homework, um, I can say that the deadline for this for this task is like four days. I want to click this. Um, a task will appear over here. I can add more stuff like um, do lab, which I need to finish in one day. And you can see it will keep adding. I can delete those as well if I want to. It's very simple, very um, useful. However, I will teach you guys how to build this by incorporating TypeScript into React. So that's basically it. Let's get into the video. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video. And today I decided to bring a tutorial where I'm going to be teaching you guys how to build a to do list in React. However, I decided to put a twist on this. Um, this is actually a TypeScript tutorial in React. And I decided that the best way to actually um, teach the beginnings of TypeScript um, to someone who wants to integrate it into a React application is by basically building one of the simplest, uh, most beginner project ever, which is a to do list. I know that the, the YouTube space is already really saturated with to do list tutorials. So in this one, it's going to be pretty straightforward. However, I will be showing you guys how to implement all the different functionalities that are required if you're using TypeScript. And before we actually get into the video, if you guys could leave a like down below, I would really appreciate it. And subscribe because it would massively help the channel grow. Um, I'm posting three times a week, so it would really help me because I'm putting a lot of work and I would really appreciate it if you guys could just leave a like and subscribe. Now let's actually get into the implementation and the code, which by the way, if you want to check it out, it's already in the description. Um, but if you want to watch the video, here it goes. Um, the first thing we actually have to do is we have to create a simple folder. I called it to do list, as you can see right here, and open VS Code. And what happens is inside of VS Code, um, you will run a simple create React app command. However, it will be a little bit different. Um, usually, when you run a create React app, you either write like yarn create um, something like this React app, or you write like npx create React app, right? Um, but the thing is, this time you will need to add a flag to it so that it will automatically generate all of your React files as TypeScript files. So what happens is I'll just write yarn create React app and a dot at the end. And then you need to pass a flag called template like this. And finally, you need to pass a TypeScript um, command like this. So it used to be actually pretty different. It used to just be um, create React app dot and then a of a TypeScript flag. However, I don't know why this changed. And I this almost killed me like a, a couple weeks, a couple months ago. Um, when this changed, I was looking everywhere to find where I would how could I do this again. And I actually haven't find, found a lot of um, resources online. So if this is what well, the problem you guys are encountering, um, here it is, if you run this command, you'll see that it will actually create a react app with your TypeScript files, I will let this run and I'll be back when this actually finishes. Okay, guys, so as you can see, um, mine already finished. Um, and initially, you can already see how different this is from a normal react application. First of all, there is a TS config file, which is like one of the most essential things for a, a project that uses TypeScript. Um, you probably won't need to do anything with it right now. But if you want to add more configuration to how your program runs and compiles your JavaScript, your TypeScript, um, I would recommend learning about how to use a TS config file. However, this is something that we need. So it's already built in for us while when we run the command. And also in our SRC, every single file now is either TSX, which is the TypeScript version of JSX, or just a TS file like you can see right here. And now that we have everything here, actually, we'll start by deleting some unnecessary files from every react application, because for example, we won't be running any tests. So I'll just delete this. I'll also delete the index.css, the logo and the setup tests. So I just delete always delete all of those um, four files initially. And we can also delete some stuff. For example, we're going to delete the initial um, code that comes with every react create react app application, and also delete the index.css from the index.csx. So now that we have this done, let's actually run our application and see how it looks. It should just be an empty string or not an empty string, an empty page. Um, this is the browser over here. As you can see, I'm um, just an empty page. And, and I'm just gonna for now kind of divide this page into um, into like two of them, as you can see right here, 
I'm just going to divide it into two so that we can actually write the code and also take a look at the right to see what is happening in our screen. Um, initially, the code will be very simple. And by the way, I won't be focusing that much on CSS in this video. I already have written the CSS that I use in this video. So I'll just paste it and go over what it means. However, I just want to show the func functionality. So I, I didn't think I I would, it would be a good idea to waste time showing CSS. And as you can see right here, we have a very simple application. So what do we do now? Well, first of all, you can see that this over here is a simple function. And in TypeScript, uh, functions are very similar. However, I want to change the format of this function to be um, using arrow, like arrow syntax like this. And when you're running um, TypeScript in React, it is always nice to define everything, even the types of, of, of your functions, right? So for example, app is a functional component. And thankfully, when you run the create React app with the TypeScript flag, it actually already comes with types um, for TypeScript. And one type that we can import over here at the top is the FC type, which means functional component. So since this is a functional component, I can just say that this is of type FC, like this. And obviously, if I, I'm not using any props, this is just a simple function. And that's completely fine, right? So what do we do here? Well, inside of here, we have to actually um, start building our project. And I'll divide it into um, actually two sections. Um, I'll divide this into the header. And I'll actually create another div, which is going to be kind of the kind of the to do list um, part of the of the project, right? So we're just going to create two divs, one called header and one called to do list. And the header div will actually be where we have like our input, as you guys saw in the beginning of the video, our input with like a button, and the to do list div will be where we see all of our tasks. And we can delete, we can like complete them, or we can just, you know, we can just manage them, right. So we're actually going to create a different component for the for our each task. But for now, let's write the code for creating the input. So in order to do that, we actually have to just come over here to our header, and just say something like, um, we want to create a an input like this um, of type text. And I also like to put a placeholder, the placeholder for this will be something like task. And I look to I like to put like three dots. And for now, this will be basically it. Let's also add um, one more input here at the bottom, which is going to be the of type number, which is actually the deadline for your tasks, right? So you want to have this, which is the name of the task, and then a deadline. So I'm just going to put something over here, like, this is the deadline. And in days, because I want to say something like, um, you put five, it means that you need to complete this in five days. And then I shall just open this up a bit. Um, and but yeah, that's basically it for our two inputs. And finally, at the bottom here, we, we might just want to put a button like this, which will say something like add task. And um, for now, that's basically it. Let's look at how it looks. Um, it's very simple. It just has three inputs over here. And obviously, it doesn't like it's completely it doesn't have any styling or anything. But as you guys saw in the beginning of the video, I actually made it so that this two inputs are on top of each other. And this button is like, um, right next to both of them. So to do that, I actually will create a div over here, which is going to wrap both of these inputs like this. And now I'll just call this div um, something like input container, um, container like this. And this is how we're going to represent both of them. Right now, you probably you can see that they're together, but in the, like they're on top of each other. Um, but we're going to fix this by adding our CSS. And to do that, we actually come over here into our app.css. And you can see that it already comes with a bunch of stuff. Um, but we're just going to delete literally all of it. Now, the initial changes that we're going to make are basically the following. We added um, basically a display of flex to our app so that we can basically divide our whole page into um, two different sections, the header, which is going to be like 30% um, of the screen, and the to do list, which is where we're going to be able to see our tasks, which is going to be something like this right here, 70% of the screen. And we set our width and our height for our app div as 100 VH and 100 VW, which basically means 100% of the screen, right. And we set the flex direction to column because it will basically make so that the sections are divided um, vertically and not horizontally. And we also added some font family, as you can see right here, which to make it look a little bit better. Now we just added um, a very simple um, 
styling over here to the header. We actually made it so that it, it, is, it represents 30% of the screen and it has a black background color of tomato, which is just a color that comes with um, with CSS. I, I, find it look, like, I find that it looks good. So that's what we did. Um, we set the width to 100% of the screen so that when we save this, it will just uh, represent like 100%. So it's kind of a rectangle that will stop at 30% of the total screen. And we also set display to flex and we aligned everything to the center so that they are perfectly centered here in the middle. Now, finally, we also added um, some styling to our input container. Remember that we created an, a div called input container, which um, just accounts for both the inputs over here, the input for the task and the input for the deadline. And what happens is um, we're just dis setting a display to flex and uh, flex direction to column so that they are stacked on top of each other. Right now, you'll see that everything will be colored, as you can see, but the inputs are actually perfectly um, styled similar to what I did in the beginning of the video. And I also set some um, styling for the inputs, as you can see right here. I just added some borders, um, border radius, so that the sides have have some like curvature over here, but the middle doesn't. Um, I think that looks nice. And I also added some like um, cursor to the button. I added, I increased the width, um, that kind of stuff. So you can check out the, the CSS. Um, again, the code is in the description, but this is basically the CSS we're gonna be using. And you can see that um, it doesn't look perfect because of this right here. We have our, our margin, like it has a white space here at the top. And to fix this, this, you can actually just come over here and say something like body and pass a margin of zero. And we also want a padding of zero. This is something that always happened when you when you just create a, a react, create react app application, but this is how you fix it. And it will just remove everything as you can see right here. Now, this should be representing, this orange thing should actually be representing 30% of the screen. And the reason why it isn't representing 30% of the screen yet, it's actually representing 100% is because we haven't add, actually added any styling for our to-do list. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm just gonna say to-do list, which is a div which we created, and I'm just gonna give it a flex of 70%. And I'm also gonna give it a width of 100%, like this. And you can see that now it represents um, beautifully 30% of the screen. And this part over here is where we're gonna be seeing our tasks in our list. Now that we have this styling done, let's actually focus on our actual code. So in order to actually um, get um, the task that the users are writing and also keep track of the list, we actually have to use some states. So I'm gonna import here at the top, the use state hook, and I'm gonna show you guys how to actually create states when you're using TypeScript in React. Because remember, you have to define types for literally everything you're writing. So what we do is we actually import this use state hook and over here at the top, we just create um, a few states, right? So we want a, t a state for the, the task which is this over here, this input. We wanna get this value for the task that the user is writing. And just, we just wanna say something like um, set task equal to use state. And we pass it a string over here because this should be a string. However, where do we define the type of this? We are seeing that its initial value is a string, but we're not actually defining its type. So in order to do that, you need to come over here and add um, this following operators and just pass the type over here. So in TypeScript, there are many different types. String is a type, which is exactly the type of this state that we want to define. We're gonna copy this and we're just gonna paste it over here two times because we're, we're gonna have a state for the deadline. And we also need to keep track of a state for the um, to-do list, right? So over here, we're just gonna say something like deadline and set deadline like this. And this over here should be actually a number because remember that um, the deadline is actually the, the amount of days, right? So I'm just gonna say something like it starts at zero, but we're gonna set that so it doesn't really matter. And the to-do list is actually gonna be a bit different, but we're not gonna set the type right now because I'll show you guys something really important when you're working with TypeScript, which is um, working with objects and interfaces. So for now, we're actually just going to um, do like leave it like this, and that's completely fine. We don't need to define a type. That's something that you need to keep. You need to understand. We don't need to actually define it. It will just help us when we're using TypeScript. It will it will help us um, figure out any bugs that we have in our application. So now that we have this done, um, let's actually write the code so that we are able to um, basically grab this this whatever is written in this inputs and put it inside of this. Um, two states over here. So to do that, I'm actually going to create a function called um, handle change, which is just a function which 
Um, it's called whenever there's any change in our inputs and it will allow us to um, basically just set the states, right? We're only going to have two states or two inputs in our application. So we're gonna, we can just write some conditional statements inside of here to determine which one we're talking about. So the thing is, um, we wanna pass this over here. So we're gonna say on change like this and just pass the handle change function, right? We're gonna do this for, for this one as well, as you can see over here and that's fine. However, how do we actually grab the event? Because when you wanna set a state to the value of an input, you actually need to grab its event, right? So how do we do that? Well, in order to do that, we actually have to define its type. So what is the type for an event in like in a function, right? In, a, in an input? Well, we can come over here and say that the argument to this function is event. And over here, there's actually a type um, that we can also import here at the top called change event, as you can see. And it represents just any events that involve changes in inputs. And we could just say that this is of type change event. And we can determine that this is actually um, we're changing an HTML input element like this. So I know this looks weird, but this is actually the type for this kind of variable. And I recommend um, taking a look at all the types. If you got stuck, uh, not knowing what a type is, um, definitely search up on Google, look at the doc documentation, everything is very well, well documented. So I would really recommend you checking that out. So we can grab the event like this, which means that now if you want to like set the task equal to the event, um, dot target dot value, we can literally just do it like this. However, there's something important. Remember, this function should um, set the task equal to the value. If we're actually talking about if we're actually grabbing the handling the change for this input over here, and not for this one. Um, so we can actually determine something by just coming over here, giving both of this inputs a name. So this will be called a task. And this should be called it's just to differentiate both of them. This should be called a deadline. And what we can do is we can just come over here and say something like, okay, if event dot target dot name is equal to, and I'll use three equal signs actually, is equal to task. So if the, if we're if the input that is calling this change function is the task one, then we want to set task equal to event dot target dot value, which is perfect. And now else, if it isn't the, the task one, then we already know that it will be the deadline one because we only have two inputs. And we could just say something like set deadline equal to this, but you'll see that it will give us an error. And the reason why it gives us an error is because we're actually trying to set something that probably is a string that returns a string. Because remember, you're, you're grabbing something inside of the input, whatever is written over here, despite being a number, this is actually a string with those numbers inside of it, right? So we can't and we said that our type for the state is actually a number. So we actually can't do this. So how do we how do we actually um, how do we actually fix this, right? So how do we actually do this? Well, very simply, we just need to convert this into a number and in JavaScript or in TypeScript, you can just convert this into a number by by wrapping it around with a with a parentheses and just saying number, this function will convert a string um, into a number. So this is basically what we're doing. We're setting the deadline equal to this. So now that we have this done, it should actually be um, grabbing the values for our inputs, we should be able to write stuff over here. And it should be being represented and changing the value of this variables over here. So that's great. However, we're not even close to being done. What we need to do now is we need to create a function, which is going to be called whenever we click on this button. And basically, this function will be able to add to our list. And also something that I completely forgot to say, um, every function should have a return type or if you don't want to, you don't need to, but it's it's important for you to know. So for example, we're not returning anything inside of here. So if, if a function is not returning anything, you can just say that its return type is void. So this is how you actually add a return type for a function. So what we're going to do down here is we're going to create a function called add task. And this function should be pretty simple, we're actually going to add a return type of void because it will actually it will also not return anything. However, the important thing here is we're actually going to just say something like, okay, um, we're going to call this function, whenever I click on this button, so we need to pass an on click event over here. Like this, um, add task. However, let's think about this, what do we want to actually do we have a state, which is a to do list, which is actually a, an array, right? So we just want to add the next task to this array. 
So we could do something like set to do list equal to the old to do list. Um, uh, so like something old to do list like this. Why isn't it? Oh, I called it to do. Sorry about that. It should be to do list. Um, and I'm just going to set it like this and then add the new task, right? Um, like this. However, there's something that there's actually something that um, isn't right here. Um, you can see it gives us some error. But the, the reason why it's actually not right is because we, we haven't defined the type of this um, list because our, our list won't be a list of just strings. We need to keep track if the user has actually completed it. Um, completed the task. And also we need to keep track for of the deadline of the task. So we need to actually make this a list of objects. And each, each object, each task will be an object like this. Um, this isn't actually code, I'm just showing you guys, um, it will have a task name like this. Um, it should be something like do homework. Um, it should it will have also a deadline of like five days, right? So we need to keep track of both of these. So how do we do that? Well, we actually need to define a type for this object for a task. So in TypeScript, what you do is you create something called an interface. And just for organization purposes, I like to create an, an external file or an external folder called interfaces, like this, it is a TypeScript file. And over here, I just export all of my interfaces to my project. So I'll just create an interface over here, called um, task. And the common standard for interfaces is you put a, an I and a capitalized I in front of it to say that you want to, it is an interface of task, right? So basically here, we just need to define all the properties that that this interface will have. So the object task will have um, just a, a, a task name, as we mentioned. And the type for this will be a string. So this is how you kind of um, the syntax for this, you define the name of the property and its type. And we'll also have a deadline which will be a number. And now what happens is we can import this interface here at the top, like this, um, from dot slash interfaces, and we can just import um, I task like this. And now we can say that this array right here, this to do list is actually an array of type I task, because each element in this array will be a task, right? Right? So we can do this by basically saying, okay, this is an, an I task array. So this is how you define it. If this was an array of strings, you can actually just do something like string array. But this is, this is actually a type that we recreated this type, this interface. And this is something that is extremely important when you're working with TypeScript. And now this is where this is giving us some problem. We're trying to add um, a string to uh, an array of type um, task, right? So what we have to do is we actually need to create an object called new task like this, which is going to be um, composed by a task name, which is going to be equal to task, and also a deadline, which is going to be equal to the deadline state that we created above. So basically, we're just grabbing the state for task and the state for deadline, and we're just putting them into an object calling it new task. And now we can actually pass new task over here instead of just task, and you'll see that it should actually um, say that it is correct. As you can see, it is actually accepting it, we're adding more stuff to our list. And now it should be actually populating. Um, just to show you guys, I'll console log our list and we'll see if it's actually um, working. Um, let's go over here. I'll open up my console log over here. Console, I'll just push this down. Um, if you guys can see there's nothing in our console, I'll try to add something like do homework, finish it in two days. And you can see now it's an empty string because of how um, um, synchronous code works. Um, we're going to come over here and say something like do chores, and three days, 23 days. And you can see that now our list is being populated by the first task that we added. Um, if I click on this again, it will actually show the second one, it will continue adding the same type to our list. So our list is actually being populated with objects of type task, as you can see. So that's great. Um, now we actually just have to display this into our screen. And that, that's, that's basically it. I actually also like to whenever I add a task, um, delete whatever is over here in our input. And we can very easily just do that by coming over here. And just for each of this um, inputs, we can just pass the value for this to be equal to um, whatever state is actually being changed whenever we type on this. And you'll see why if I come over here and say that the value of this is equal to um, deadline as well, you'll see that it, there, there won't be any issues, right? Um, if I come over here and say something like do homework, and 
increase this to a two, nothing happens. It actually works, I add to my list. However, over here, I can now just say something that I just added something to the list. I can say that set task is equal to an empty string and set deadline is equal to zero. So it basically clears out everything. If you guys can see over here, I'm gonna say do homework again and just make this equal to four. And when I click add task, it should reset everything. And th that's just a minor pet peeve that I have, um, which is, I just wanted to show you guys how to do. So now that we have this done, let's actually write the code so that we're able to display our items into our screen, our tasks into our screen, right? So in order to do that, we're actually going to be creating an external component because I thought that it, that would be something extremely important to show you guys because it is a bit different to work with components in TypeScript. So I'm gonna create a folder over here called components. And we're gonna create a, f uh, a component called to do task. And it is of type TSX because we're gonna be writing some TSX code. And I'm gonna import um, just a simple functional component and we're gonna do the same kind of, kind of the same formatting that we did with um, the other functional component. We're gonna say const to do task um, equals to this and then the arrow syntax like this. So now we're actually not gonna be working with this. What we wanna do is we just wanna display something like um, task, let's just write task to see if it is actually working. We're going to come to our app.tsx. And inside of this part of our code over here, instead of our to do list div, we basically want to write it so that we map through every element in the list and display each element in our screen. So to do that, we're just want to map through our to do list like this. And we're going to say dot map. And it will obviously be a function over here, which will take in two arguments, but we're going to return um, a the, our component, so a to do task like this. So basically, the, the the flow of this is we're going to map through the list and we're going to return for each element a new task to be displayed in our screen. You can see that right now it's actually displaying it. If we add more items, it's going to continue displaying as we click, right? So it's actually working. However, we actually want to personalize each of these tasks, right? We want to display the task name and the deadline. So to do that, we need to grab the task here at the top for each task in our function. We're going to grab it like this and say that it is of type I task. And we also want to grab the key, right? Because we don't we want to eliminate that annoying error that exists in in, in, in react, which kind of tells you um, to add a key. So we're just going to say that we want a key and a key will be a number. Key is basically just the index of this element in this to do list. So now in our component, we can pass a key like this and say that this key is equal to key to again, remember, um, remove this warning, this, the, you shouldn't worry that much about this, it's just a warning. However, this is just important so that we remove that warning. And now it is the time where I teach you guys how to actually add props to your um, functional components using TypeScript. So how do we do that, right? We need to, we want to be able to grab this task inside of here, create a prop inside of here that accepts this task. But how do we do that? Well, in order to do that, we need to come over here and we need to define an interface called props. Since this is a prop interface, um, I don't want to create it. I don't want to create it inside of our interfaces file. That's more for um, actual types and external things. So whenever you want to define your, your props, you actually need to come over here at the top of your component and say interface, then probably call it props. And here you can just define the type for each individual prop that you will be accepting. So for example, I want to accept a, a task and its type will be I task, which I think it will maybe, yeah, it automatically imported, which is great. But if it, does, it didn't for you, you can just um, import it like this. And we also will be accepting more stuff later, but I'll, for now, let's just say that we're accepting this. But how do we say to our functional component that it should accept this interface over here? Well, we can come over here, open and close um, curly braces to say it's an object. We're destructuring it and say that this object is of type props. And now we can just grab this task inside of here like this. And now we have access to this task in our component, but it's given us some error because we actually have to pass this task over here. If we wanted to make this prop um, item optional, we could actually just put a question mark over here. And if I save this, you'll see that it won't give us any errors anymore. Let me just save this over here um, and refresh the screen. You'll see that it won't give us any errors anymore because now this prop is optional, but we actually need we want to be to, to make this required because we don't want to display a task without its actual properties, right? So now let's actually try to display the task name. Let's just say that each um, each task should just have a div displaying the task name. So what do we do now? Um, oh, I forgot that I actually need to pass the task inside of here. So now that we have this prop 
defined over here, we can just say that we want to pass a prop called task and pass the task for each of these um, items that exist in the to do list. So if I refresh this, and I keep adding task, I'm just going to write whatever, you'll see that we keep like, I'm um, adding the individual um, tasks. And if you want to also see the deadline, I can also do something like um, task dot deadline, like this, and it will also display the deadline right next to it, all of them are zero. But if I turn this into um, five, you'll see that it will actually it's actually displaying the correct items. So that's great for us. However, we want to basically style this a bit because it currently looks a little bit ugly. And we're going to do the same thing as we did um, previously, I'm just going to paste some some CSS that I wrote, and I'm going to go over what it, they mean. Well, actually, before we get into displaying the CSS, um, I actually want to add more inputs into or more like um, define our task because it currently doesn't, um, it's, it's not actually well structured. Um, first of all, I want to give this a class name, each task should have a class name called task. And also, I want to be able to divide our screen. If you remember in the beginning of the video, when I showed you guys, I want to be able to divide our, our task into two things. Um, first of all, it will be the content um, of the of the task. So like the deadline and the task name. So I'll just pass a class name called content. And also just a simple button, which when clicked, it will be able to complete the task. So like eliminate or delete the task. So I'm just going to put an X for now, which basically will display this because we actually haven't displayed our task name. But inside of here, we can pass two spends, um, two spend tags like this, um, and display the task for the first one display the task name, like this. And for the second one, I just want to display the deadline. And right now it will probably look really ugly, but that's completely fine. So I'm just going to display the task and the task name. And we also have a button for each one of them. So now let's get into the styling, I'm going to come here to my app.css. And instead of here, I'm just going to cut to me pasting the code and going over it. So the first thing I did was I basically just added a display of flags and aligned everything to the center, not to mention I also added some padding so that everything is like centered in the middle. I know it still looks ugly, but um, it, it's now not at the like at the left side anymore. It's actually centered um, right at the middle of our screen. If I open this up a bit, you'll see that it's perfectly centered because I used the align item center um, functionality. And yeah, it's working now. Now I added um, some styling to our task, you can see if I save this, um, currently, we can not see them because I made the color white, but if I make this color black, just for now, um, you guys will see that it is just like sent like they're put next to each other, but the button is to the side of it, which is perfectly what we want. And it looks it's starting to look good. Now this is actually starting to look good. You can see we added some styling to our content um, div inside of our task, we made it equal to 80% of our whole task div, which is this over here. And the button is 20%. So the button should be this over here. Now I also divided our content div into two um, so that like this is the first pen and this is the second pen as you can see over here, I made both of them be colored um, the color tomato um, so that it looks a little bit better and I will also again change this to white so that it starts to look a little bit better as you can see and and I also centered everything in the middle of the task as you can see right here. Finally, I just added some very simple styling to our button and it looks like this right now. We can just um, add more tasks but obviously um, we're not being able to delete anything, which is a functionality I'm going to be adding in a second. But as you can see, it's starting to look good. And this is literally all the CSS we have to write for this video. So now we're going to basically um, write the functionality so that we're able to complete this task or delete the task from our screen, right? So how do we do that? Well, we can come over here to our app.tsx, we can co create a function called complete task, like this, um, const complete task, and it's just a very simple function, but it will also have some types. Um, first of all, as always, the return type will be void because we're not returning anything. But then we're going to have to take an argument inside of here, which is actually the name of the task we want to delete. So I'm going to create a, a variable called task name to delete something like this. And we'll say that the type of it is string, right? Because it's actually the type that we want. So how do we do this now? How, how do we how do we make this function actually delete our task? Well, to do that, we need to come over here at the bottom. And we need to say that um, we want to set our to do list to be um, a, it's like itself and filter everything inside of it that has a name equal to the name that we pass into this function. So basically, we can just grab a task name over here, like this. And we can 
And this actually needs to be called task, right? Because we're, we're mapping through the list and it's, it's just a task. And we can use the filter function to return only the items which the task dot task name is not equal to the task name to delete. And what this does is it will go through every element in this to do list. And if the task name is not equal to the task name to delete that we pass into this function, it's great, it's going to keep that into our list. And that's great. But if it ends up being the same, then it's going to delete that the task from our to do list, which is great, because now we're deleting, we're completing a task, we can just we just need to pass the actual task that we want to delete as the argument to this function. And to do that, we actually need to have access to the task. But think about this, where do we have access to this? We actually have access to this in our to do task. Um, kind of our, our component, right? So we actually have to call this function from inside of here inside of this button over here. So in order to do that, we need to pass this function as prop. So we're going to actually come over here and say that we want to add a function over here as one of its types. And that way to actually call a function as a type in a prop is very simple, you just put the name of the function, open it close parentheses, and it's return type, which in this case is void. And then in this button, actually over here, I can just this structure in this function, complete task, which is part of the prop. And in this button, I can pass an on click event, which will basically call the complete task function. And I actually need to pass an argument to this function, because if you recall, I need to pass a task name to delete. So to do that, I actually need to come over here and say that it also has a uh, an argument called task name to delete. And the type of this is string. And now we're saying that we that complete task is a function with this type and this return type. And now inside of here, we need to pass this function, but also pass the task name inside of here. So to do that, we can just call a function like this. And then just call the complete task, and pass the task, the task name as the argument. So now we're actually calling the function and passing the correct task name as the argument to this function. And now in our app.tsx, we can call this task, this complete task function and pass it in our to do task. Um, just come over here and say complete task is a prop. And instead of here, we want to pass the complete task function. And now this should actually be working, I'm going to open this up. And as you can see, if I click on these things, it should actually be deleting all the um, tasks that have um, um, the name, right? So clean dishes, for example, I, I want to clean my dishes in two days, when I add that I want to uh, finish proofs, homework, I'm going to actually need to finish that for tomorrow. And finally, let me just do finish essay, which I don't need to make uh, actually in real life, I don't need to, <laughs> to do any essays anymore. But let's pretend like we, I have to. And now if I want to delete, for example, imagine I just finished my proofs, you just click on this, we deleted our proofs, um, homework from our to do list, if I wanted to just say that I cleaned my dishes, you can see it works as well. And this is, is working perfectly. As you can see, this is exactly what I wanted to teach you guys. Now, now, what are the next steps? Well, I think that this is a great introduction to um, learning TypeScript. If you're working with react, there aren't a lot of tutorials on TypeScript with react, I've made one in the past. However, even I didn't like that much uh, that tutorial that much. So I really wanted to bring this one by building a project a very simple project, which is already very well known so that if you already built a to do list, at least you're getting is like understanding everything and just incorporating the, the key features of a, of TypeScript into a react application, which will help you in the in, in the future, right. So yeah, that's basically it. If you want to check it out, I have other videos on TypeScript, which I linked in the description. Um, there go, they go a lot more in depth, I have a video literally talking about how to start learning TypeScript, if you already know JavaScript. So if you want to check it out, I, re I talk about all the different aspects of it. So the link of that is going to be in the description. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting three times a week. And it's been a lot of work. And I would really, really appreciate if you guys could help my channel grow. And yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.